Hello there, Sharks. I'm here with Alex Fitzgerald. How's life? Good, brother. How L you doing? Great. I want you to give one piece of life advice to the viewers here today. Get good sleep. For years, I neglected my sleep cycles because I was a real macho guy, thinking that I didn't need sleep. And wow, once you get your sleep together, that helps you control your diet. That helps you control your exercise. And how you feel each day is really just a chemi chemistry experiment. Wow, that was very good advice because I am adamant that I get a full night of sleep as well. Because when I don't get sleep, I don't play poker well, I'm cranky, Sad. I'm annoyed, I'm angry. <laughs> and um, yeah, get your sleep. I know everyone's already clicked off the channel, but if you're still here today, <laughs> thank you. Today we're going to be taking a look at a hand that you played recently here at the World Series of Poker. You're facing a min raise from early position, 250 big blinds deep. Yes, sir. We have queen jack suited on the hijack seat. You can kind of do whatever you want. You opt to call. Button makes it 800. All right. Squeezing it up. Under the gun plus two calls. We're going to see a flop. Mm -hmm. Everyone always comments in the YouTube section about how it takes me so long to even get to the flop. <laughs> we talked about sleep. Gave you great life advice. And it's only a minute to the video, okay? If you enjoy this, do us a favor. Click the like and subscribe button below. And click the notification bell. I'll try to get through the pre-flop action quicker. All right. Flop comes queen. Four, three. Mm -hmm. Two spades. We have the top pair no kicker. Uh, maybe not no kicker, but, you know, not the best kicker. Under the gun plus two checks. You are, of course, going to check everything in this scenario because button should have aces, kings, ace, queen, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. All right, you check. Button now bets 2,100, which is a pretty big bet on a relatively uncoordinated board. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is a spot where you'll see a lot of strong players betting, like, 1,000 if they're going to be betting, it, like, any, any time on this board, and usually they're going to be betting pretty strong to begin with. But he goes bigger, fine. Then under the gun, plus two calls. What do we do with our queen jack here? Well, this was a very specialized situation because it was a lower buy-in at the WSOP and people were ready to get out of the house and they were having some fun. This was very <laughs> different than a normal game I would play. So what we're thinking here is, traditionally if I'm playing online and I usually try to focus on bums, they're not really capable of bluffing. It, you have to ask yourself, what are they really betting and calling here that we could beat? If Button was squeezing here with Queen-10, it would seem even that sounds preposterous. And would they really be betting this much? It's a tricky spot. What, what do you think? Well, so given the reads that you just gave, takes mm -hmm. some of my previous analysis and throws it out of the window, mm -hmm. right? Because whenever the player on the button bets the flop, they should have very good made hands and good draws, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe they're going for like some protection bet with like pocket tens or something, who knows. But the player on the button should have a good made hand or a good draw, which you're mm -hmm. okay against. If that's the case though, under the gun plus two should also have right. a lot of good high equity hands because they're out of position, facing a big bet, and they have to worry that you are sitting here with a set mm -hmm. or straight flush draw or whatever. So under the gun plus two should, should also be quite strong, but a lot of players in... The smaller buying games, when you say smaller, you mean like $1,000 tournament or something, right? It's yeah. Not, it's not all that small, right. but it's still a, you know, small, I guess small buy-in World Series tournament. Mm -hmm. A lot of the players come out here to get their gamble on once per year, or, and they are splashing around. So, given this, partic uh, this specific read, like, I wouldn't be shocked if the player on the button just has a hand like, you know, Ace-10, and they're just betting it, because they think that's what they're supposed to do. Or under the gun plus two could have pocket sevens because he thinks he's supposed to call. Mm -hmm. So it, it typically ranges are not going to get much tighter than the GTO ranges in multi-way pots because you're really supposed to be pretty tight in multi-way pots in general. Um, but they often do get way looser mm -hmm. as players get worse and worse. So if you put me in the scenario against like two world-class players, I'd probably just fold immediately because we're deep stacked or out of position. Mm -hmm. We're really just hoping it checks down. And very often it's not going to check down because usually on the river, if someone has a busted draw, they're going to bet. Or if they have the nuts, they're going to bet. Like, you're going to face some more aggression. Mm -hmm. But here, you know, I don't mind taking off a card. Yeah. So we do call, and we're very clearly hoping it just goes check, check, check. Mm -hmm. Check, 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 and they give us the pot. But turn comes the seven of diamonds, and now under the gun, plus two leads for 5,000. Yuck. I want all of you to take a second and think about this spot. Pause the video and write what you would do in the comments section below. Would you let them have it? By folding? Would you call? Would you put in a minimum raise to find out where you stand? 
Or, would you let him have it by ripping it all in? All right, I don't think we can ever let him have it by ripping it all in. <laughs> no. We could let him have it by folding. I think that's reasonable. Min raising to find out where you stand is not reasonable because you're min raising into a bunch of nut hands. And um, so we're really looking at calling or folding, right? Yes, sir. So, I don't know. How do you view this spot? This was a very tricky hand because typically I would just be looking to fold here for a lot of the reasons we've already discussed, which is if you think about logically what somebody should have here when somebody just bombs a multi-way pot <laughs> you would assume the person calling down would go oh my draw probably isn't that great here or my really crappy pair is not that good here but when you're playing live a lot of times people look down at their fives and they go hey there's only one over card awesome <laughs> <laughs> let's go and then hey that seven gave me a gut shot awesome i'm just gonna lead here and when he led there I didn't get the idea it was like, boy, oh boy, I hope I get action. It was one of those, like, I guess I'm supposed to lead here leads. Just kind of, you know how sometimes people will put the chips in and they look like, what, why the hell am I doing this? <laughs> one of those, like, I'm so supposed to protect my aces or whatever it is. You know the look. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he kind of had that look. So I, I thought, just call really quickly and hopefully Button will go, dang, these guys really have some hands. Maybe I should stop bombing this pot and I'll get out of here. And then if he has a real hand, obviously, there's nothing you can do at that point. But he had been a little bit more active and I thought having a little bit more fun. And I thought there was a really good chance he'd get out of here. So a lot of stuff's happening here. The first mm -hmm. is, if you can kind of tell the button doesn't love their hand, you should be way more inclined to continue, right? Yeah. Like based on some library. Not that you said you had that, but if you could just look and tell that they were kind of done with it, because, I mean, look, I just blast out 5,000 chips, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you can tell he's like, oh, okay, you know, then you're, right. you're closing the action. And a lot of times they'll, like, recheck their hand and look a little sour right when the lead comes out. Mm -hmm. And you're right. You have to look to your left or not let him know you're looking, but try to look. For sure. So if you can tell the button's done, you're way more like, you should be way more inclined to continue. Mm -hmm. Also, you said something that I like doing, where guy bets 5,000 and you pretty nonchalantly call. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, obviously I'm in. Mm. Right? If you give them the obvious slam in, then that, I think, makes most people be less inclined to bluff you on the river. If they do have a bluff. Because right here, what should a actual good player be leading with? They should be leading with their best made hands and their draws. They probably shouldn't be leading with anything on this board, to be fair. But if they <laughs> are leading, they should be leading with their best made hands, like sets, two pairs, whatever. And then also high equity draws, probably, I mean, I guess, pairs plus flush draws or straights, you know, stuff. It's very good hands. Mm -hmm. So you want to shut down the bluffs because if you call with his hand and your opponent's on the river with a bluff, you really don't want him to shove because I presume you're going to fold, right? Like you're done yes. with it if they jam river. So you want to do everything you can to get them to think you love your hand. So I like the quick call. Okay. Cool. While still keeping it in mind, the player on the button is relevant, right? Mm -hmm. The problem with a quick call is you may not have a whole lot of time to assess the button. That's a good Because point. maybe if the button... Well, the button may react after 30 seconds of thought. But if you wait 30 seconds, then now maybe the under the gun plus who's going to bluff the river every time. So yes. it's, there's a little give and take here. Mm -hmm. But no reads whatsoever. I would just fold here and not worry about it. But if we get reads that under the gun plus two is just kind of confused and putting out a bet, and we can tell in any way whatsoever that the button's done with it, then I guess you can stick around. Yep. You can really go either way. All of the options are available, except for raising. Don't raise. Two options are available. You decide to call who it feels dirty. It did. <laughs> this is a spot where I think a lot of people get it in their heads that the under the gun plus two player is always going to bet the river. Yes. But they're not. I mean, you give a lot of people, especially in small stakes tournaments, a busted draw. They're just going to check. That's right. Or you give them like a weird lead with, I don't even know, seven, six. <laughs> they're just going to check, right? They're mm -hmm. not going to turn into a bluff. So this is a spot where you may think you're going to face aggression a lot, but you're not going to face aggression every time. Sometimes you get a queen or a jack as well. Don't forget those. Then you just yeah. win. River's a nine. The opponent shoves that you're folding? Yes, most likely. Because actually, to be honest with you, I'd have to take my time. And the great thing about Americans is if you talk to them, they'll talk back mm -hmm. and let you know how nervous they are, whereas Euros will just not talk to you a lot of the time. So I would probably try to get a feel for how riled up 
that shove got him, but I didn't expect to see much aggression here. I implement the European strategy when someone tries to talk to me. Good. Shut down immediately. <laughs> um, funny enough, we actually had Faraz Jaka in here recently, and there was a similar spot on the river where I said, what would you do if the guy made this play that would put you in a bad spot? And he said, well, first thing I would do is I would talk to him. Yes. This is something I am not so great at, but I'm glad we have people here to give you all the information. <laughs> so are you trying to just generally look for uncomfortableness level? Well, that really changes player to player, so it's really good to get reads. You should be paying attention at all times at a live table because some guys get really riled up with a big hand, but if the guy looks like he's waiting for his mail to be delivered when he has a hand and all of a sudden he's really riled up when he jams on you, it could be the nuts, but a lot of times it's a busted draw, so I just go to hell with it and call a lot of the time. Yeah, you have to you have to pay attention is what it amounts to. Mm -hmm. A lot of people try to, you know, play on their phone all day and then all of a sudden they're in this giant pot and think, oh, I'm, I made a read. But like, eh, I know you didn't, you're guessing, right? <laughs> yeah. But if you observe what your opponents are doing over and over and over again, you'll start to just kind of sense things and see things mm -hmm. that will indicate strength or weakness. So anyway, not this time. They make life easy. Yeah, he checks. <laughs> you ever bluff it all in? Try to get king, queen to fold? I you know what? I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't even think of that. I, I would I would not think of that either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, easy check, check. A7 of spades. Ooh. All right. This is a spot where your opponent probably should have bluffed the river. It's, right. a, it's a weird spot where he probably should, well, he shouldn't have A7 of spades to begin with, most likely. But if he did, your range is really either a lot of busted draws yes. or a lot of queens, right? Yes. And if he rips it in, it's pretty, pretty tough for the queens. Hmm. And obviously, busted draws are all mostly busted anyway, so. Yes. Rough spot. Nice hand for you, though. You want about as much as you possibly could with the top pair, no kicker. So yep. good job, good work. Thank I probably you. would have bailed out on the turn. I don't blame you. Brutal. All right. That's me for today. Where can people follow you? Uh, go to PokerHeadRush.com to get my daily training newsletter. I don't know if you all know this. It's hard to write an email every day. <laughs> very, very hard. And you do it. You grind it out, and you add lots of value. Life is about adding value. If you get your sleep, you can add a lot of value to everyone else. Better the world, and how about people? Good luck in your games. Have fun. Thanks again for being here. Click the like and subscribe buttons below, and we'll talk to you next time.